morning everyone! Before we start, we're gonna have a moment of silence for prayer. once again we prepared a little bit of surprise for you that we are sure you will be delighted so in this surprise all you have to do is to guess the scrambled words and in each correct answers will be given a corresponding points so let's start so in these scrambled letters who can please guess okay yes Jasmine okay very good it is time Next, for the second scrambled letters. Okay, yes, Mark. Very good. It is bleeding. Third one. Yes, Jason. It is Lancet. Oh, yes, very good. It is Lancet. Fourth one. Who can guess these letters? Okay, Ariel, please. Okay, it is tourniquet. Good job. And for the last one. Yes, Lian. It is blood. Very good. So all of you got a total points of five. So for today's objectives, at the end of this lesson, students will be able to demonstrate bleeding time properly Second is to determine different factors that significantly affect bleeding time. And lastly is to cite the importance of doing bleeding time. Before we proceed with the actual demonstration, I'll pick one student here in the class to define based on his or her own understanding the words given in the icebreaker game. And that is Angela. Yes, Angela, can you please share your own definition based on the words given in the icebreaker game, such as the lancets, tourniquet? Can you please share your own definition or your own understanding about what are those? Okay. Mm hmm. Fantastic! That is very good, Angela. That is a good point. Also, I know some of you have personal experiences about being wounded, right? Can I please hear some insights, Andrew? Yes. Can you please share some insights about your personal experiences about being wounded? Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was shocking and painful, huh? Mm. Okay, thank you, Andrew, for sharing that experience of yours. But we're going to proceed with our actual demonstration. Last time, we discussed how our bodies would react 
or should I specifically say, are platelets work together to help stop our bleeding. You know you do not want to lose the very fluid that makes you alive. So to recap, we have learned that clotting process has four stages, namely, constriction of the blood vessel, second, formation of a temporary platelet plug, and third is the activation of the coagulation cascade, and fourth is the formation of the fibrin plug or the final plug. But for today, we will apply our past lecture into a clinically significant procedure. Specifically, we will learn to properly determine the bleeding time of a patient. First, bleeding time is a laboratory test to assess patient function and the body's ability to form a clot. So this test involves making a puncture wound in a superficial area of the skin. There are several clinical significances or importances of doing bleeding time. So first, we have for the diagnosis of bleeding disorders such as von Willebrand disease or hemophilia which can affect the body's ability to form clots. Second, it is the monitoring the effectiveness of treatment because bleeding time tests may be used to monitor the effectiveness of treatment for bleeding disorders or other conditions that affect the blood clotting system. And third is the assessing the risk of bleeding. So bleeding time tests may be used to assess a person's risk of bleeding in certain situations, such as before surgery or dental procedures. And fourth is it can be used to monitor the use of blood thinners. So bleeding time tests may be used to monitor the effects of blood thinning medications such as aspirin or warfarin on the blood clotting system. Bleeding time test is typically measured as a part of a comprehensive bleeding evaluation which may also include other tests to assess the function of the blood clotting system. So the results of bleeding time tests can help doctors diagnose and manage bleeding disorders and other conditions that affect the body's ability to form blood clots. It's also done to decide whether a patient is safe before for a surgery or not. So can anyone tell me here why? Yes, Mark? You are saying that it's used to test if the patient has bleeding disorders? You're correct. But can you specify the thing it has to do with surgery, which involves cutting of the skin and cutting of that covering of organs where there is full of blood vessels? To test if patient will not lose huge amount of blood during surgery. Is that what I said? Exactly. Bleeding time tests may be used as a part of pre-surgical evaluation to assess a person's risk of bleeding during surgery and to determine whether any additional precautions or treatments are necessary. So abnormal bleeding times may indicate that a person has a bleeding disorder or that their blood clotting system is not functioning properly. So in such cases, the surgeon and other members of the surgical team may need to take additional precautions to minimize the risk of bleeding during surgery. And let's explore the factors that can affect bleeding time and you might watch out for this. So first, there is this platelet count because people with low platelet counts or what we call in the disease of thrombocytopenia may have longer bleeding times. Second, another factor that can affect bleeding time is platelet function because certain medications such as aspirin and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or NSAIDs can interfere with this platelet function not count and may result in longer bleeding times. Third factor to that can impact this is the blood vessel damage because damage to the blood vessels such as that caused by injury or surgery can also result in longer bleeding times and fourth is hemostatic disorders because some certain medical conditions such as the von Willebrand disease and hemophilia can affect the body's ability to form blood clots and may also result in longer bleeding times how about if I have a disease that makes my blood sicker to the point that it clogs my blood vessel is my bleeding time longer or shorter than the normal range? 
Yes, Anna? That's correct. It is shorter. This orders that thickens the blood such as polycythemia vera, which is a condition in which the body produces too many red blood cells, can make the blood thicker and more prone to clotting, which can shorten bleeding time. Disorders that cause the blood to become thicker or more viscous can increase the risk of stroke. Stroke is a serious and often life-threatening condition that occurs when the blood flow to the brain is disrupted, either by a blockage or by bleeding. When the blood flow to the brain is disrupted, the brain is not able to get the oxygen and nutrients it needs, which can lead to damage or death of brain cells. So today, I will demonstrate the Jukes method of determining bleeding time and you must watch closely because after it, each pair will perform the Jukes method in determining bleeding time. So, one partner will be the patient while the other will perform the procedure. First, let's prepare our materials. We have here our lancet and its needle. Our cotton balls, alcohol, and a paper to catch the bleeding. So first, let's wear our complete PPE. And most importantly, we need to perform hand hygiene before and after the procedure. Then, with the jukes methods, the patient is pricked with a special needle or lancet, which is preferably either on earlobe or fingertip, and after having been swabbed with alcohol. But for now, let's use our fingertip, particularly the side of the ring finger here. So anyone does know why? Does anyone know why we need to use our ring finger here? Okay. To know why, let's feel the skin around our finger. Which part has a thicker skin? Is it the front or the side? Yes, Mark? Very good observation. It is the side because the side has more thicker skin than the front one then if we are preferring the thicker skin over the thin one then what are we avoiding contact to yes may very good analysis i suggest hitting the side of the finger as it is thick enough to be far away from the bone as compared to the front which has a thin skin so furthermore, we will use the ring finger because it has thinner calluses than your other fingers. Whereas your index finger has more calluses due to it is being used always. It is always used in repeated tasks, that's why it has thicker calluses. And thicker calluses means it needs a deeper cut. Also, ring finger used for pricking because it is relatively painless as compared to other fingers because it has a small nerve supply so let's continue for starting we must disinfect our finger but because we have a lancet device we must first assemble this so we need to open this we need to remove the used needle Take a new one, insert it, don't touch the needle, insert it until it clicks, then it's already primed. Then insert it carefully so that the needle won't touch the casing, 
can set it to your desired depth of puncture. Since in our procedure we need 3 to 4 millimeters, I will choose 4 millimeters. You can choose between 3 and 4 millimeters. Then we must have an alcohol swab, put the disinfectant, and then wipe our desired area to be punctured. Rotation, the minimum is infection, possible, and we must choose the side of the finger, particularly the ring finger. So, before puncturing, we must before puncturing, we must ready our time, our stopwatch, and we will start instantly as we puncture it. So, ready? In 3, 2, 1. Start. Then we will blot it every 30 seconds. Okay. 10 seconds. Let's then stop our finger so that it will lose more blood. Still depends on you. Thirty. That's the first thirty seconds. Then we will blot it again on another 30 seconds. So we hit our 30 second mark, which is one minute. seconds it's still as bleeding we will stop if the bleeding stops so for now okay another 30 seconds can see there is no bleeding on the paper left and that's how we measure our time so we measure our time as two minutes because it's the closest 30 second interval in which our blood in which there is no blood that is bleeding on our wound the platelet has successfully formed a barrier in my skin to prevent me from bleeding more okay thank you the usual time is about 2 to 5 minutes. In cases in which the bleeding time exceeds at 20 minutes, immediately stop and report the bleeding time as greater than 20 minutes. I will give you 20 minutes to form your pairs using your phlebotomy kit and then list down the results in a clean one fourth paper. I will roam around and check and guide you in these invasive procedures. I will ask some questions on who's here have taken aspirin lately? How about disorders regarding blood? Is there someone here? Okay, no one. And that's good to hear. We can proceed in our procedure and I will ask is there anybody here have any questions? Okay, none. Thank you so much and let's proceed.
job everyone on the bleeding time test demonstration i noticed that most of you were able to properly sterilize the puncture area and follow the correct procedure for the test however a few of you seem to struggle with keeping the wound set clean and free from contaminants remember it's important to maintain sterile conditions and ensure prevention of infection during this procedure to ensure accurate results. I also noticed that a few of you had trouble accurately timing the bleeding. Make sure to pay attention to the stopwatch and record the exact time to the nearest 30 second interval. Also remember to block the bleeding after the first 30 seconds instance of bleeding, not the first instance of bleeding. Overall, I'm proud of the progress you've made in this procedure. Oops, I forgot that I have a breakdown there and that honestly hurts. But keep practicing and keep an eye on those areas for improvement. Remember, the bleeding time test is an important diagnostic tool that helps us evaluate the function of platelets and integrity of small blood vessels. So, it is crucial that we perform this test correctly and accurately in order to provide the best care for our patients safely. But for now, let's have a short quiz for you to test what you have learned during our demo. Your quiz answer sheets in one for paper with your names on them will serve as your attendance for today's class. The questions will be displayed here in the presentation. So... Our test will consist of a true or false section and an enumeration section. Don't worry about the enumeration part because I will be checking it personally. So first, question number one for true or false. Index finger is the most preferred finger to be pricked. Again, true or false, index finger is the most preferred finger to be pricked. Second, number two, the front part of the finger is also preferred to be pricked. Again, true or false, the front part of the finger is also preferred. Please cover your papers. Number three, for true or false, alcohol swabbing is done after pricking. Again, true or false, alcohol swabbing is done after pricking. For number 4, the preferred depth for pricking is 1 to 2 millimeters. Again, for true or false, the preferred depth for pricking is 1 to 2 millimeters. This is number 4. For number 5, true or false, the bleeding is blotted every 30 seconds. Again, true or false, number 5, the bleeding is blotted every 30 seconds. Please cover your papers. Number 6, for true or false, the normal bleeding time is 2 to 5 minutes. Again, for number 6, the normal bleeding time is 2 to 5 minutes. For number 7, true or false, the blood thinners shortens bleeding time. Again, true or false, number 7, blood thinners shortens bleeding time. For number 8 to 9, can you list some factors that affect bleeding time? Again, for numbers 8 and 9, can you enumerate the factors that affect bleeding time? Only two factors. Yes, yes.
You're done now? Okay, okay. Okay, is everyone done? Then we'll proceed with number 10. For number 10, please cite one importance of doing giving time. Again, cite just one importance of doing giving time. Again, please cover your papers okay please pass your papers so thank you for your papers and here are the answers to the short quiz first number one is false why because the index finger is not the most preferred but it is the ring finger. Number two, false. It is the side part, not the front part of the finger. Number three is also false because alcohol swabbing must be done before pricking to avoid infection. Number four is also false. Because the preferred depth for pricking is 3 to 4 millimeters, not 1 to 2 millimeters. And for number 5, yes, it is true. The bleeding is blotted every 30 seconds. Every 30 seconds. Number 6, the normal bleeding time is 2 to 5 minutes. Anything lower and anything higher than that can constitute an abnormal condition or something wrong with the procedure. Number seven is also true. True that blood thinners can shorten bleeding time. So for numbers eight to nine, the correct answers for factors that affect bleeding time are the following. Platelet count, platelet function, blood vessel damage, and hemostatic disorders. Anything similar or reiteration of that I consider in my checking and for number 10 is the importance of doing bleeding time which are the following diagnosis monitoring the effectiveness of treatment or assessing the risk of bleeding any similar answers I shall consider when checking so to wrap up everything can someone please here in the class share some short reflection on what did you learn on today's demonstration Okay, yes, Mike. Can you please share some insights before we end our class? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. So, to summarize everything, about what Mike said, bleeding time is the time that elapses between the puncture of the skin and the stoppage of the blood oozing using a lancet. According to Mike, we really need a bleeding time test if you've been having a bleeding that won't stop, especially from small incisions, punctures, or cuts. So bleeding time is, to, is used to evaluate platelet function and to screen patients for bleeding tendencies before a scheduled surgery. To further enhance your knowledge, I'm gonna group you into two where you will make a 15-minute video presentation on demonstrating bleeding time. It should include its procedures and the significance of doing bleeding time. Before we formally end our class, let's have first a closing prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Gracious Father, thank you for making this day successful. As we depart, 
Lord, we ask you to be with us. Your presence has been in this place from the start to the end, and we want to say thank you. Lord, as we end this meeting, let us meet a song in the light. May we put into practice what we have discussed and learned. Help us to make a difference in this world for the glory of your name. In Jesus' name, we believe and pray. Amen. Thank you so much everyone for your participation. And I hope that you gain a significant amount of wisdom in today's discussion. See you on the next one. Bye! Thank you.